ました。Because the stages are rougher and tend to be longer than on most of the other forest rallies in this country, and it's the challenge and also nice country to drive in. You're always familiar with some of the stages, are you? Oh no, not at all. No, we we came up to do the Granite City and crashed down the big holes. So I'm told we're not doing that stage again, so it's a bit of a relief. Nothing, Harry. Uh, have you done the Scottish before? Yes, I did last year. It was my second rally in Great Britain. And what were you in last year? I was in my old Ascona. Actually, it wasn't that old, but anyway, in my Ascona. Okay. What about your servicing backup? Well, what have you got there? Uh, we've got um, a Granada estate and a van full of rally jackets, so I don't know how we're going to get on with that, you know. It's just, um... Who do you think is the other men on form at the moment? Uh, Russell Brooks and Dr. Clark. And the actual stage mileage is very similar to the Welsh. So really, it's going to be quite a sprint event, unlike in past years. Um, everyone's going to be flat out right from the word go, I think. Well, I think the stages are uh, more challenging than most of the British stages. They're much twistier and humpier. And of course, it's in reputation of being a bit tougher than the others, that um, you know, perhaps it isn't such a sprint as all the others are, and that you have to be a little bit more uh, careful with your car. Perhaps towards the end, then you can start you know, really moving. But uh, if you start going flat out on the Scottish, you're liable to finish up with a rather tired car. I don't think you can do that anymore. You know, there was a time when you could take it easy and then try a bit later, but they all try from the word go, you see. Once you let them get away, that's it. I think there's perhaps a bit more emphasis on endurance on this event than on most of the British events, simply because of the, the hardness of the roads and the effect on the cars. Um, this year is slightly different format, isn't it, in that the night section is towards the end of the rally rather than at the beginning. Is that going to make any difference, do you think, to the results? I don't think so. Um, the Scottish has normally had most of its special stages at the beginning rather than the end, but it shouldn't affect the result a great deal. Best of luck anyway, Jack. <laughs> Friday, June the 4th, 1976. Day one of the 31st Scottish International Rally. Last year's winner, Roger Clark, is first away. This classic summer event, a 1,200-mile journey over some of the fastest and roughest forest stages in Britain, has attracted 150 of Britain's leading international and club drivers as well as some highly talented visitors from abroad. Harry Vattenen is one of the super fans of rallying. He's been the talk of rallying, international rallying. Although the winner is expected to be among the top escort drivers, all with 200 or more horsepower at their toes, Leyland's new TR7s attract admiring looks, as well as some raised eyebrows. Will they last the distance, or drop out with engine failure, as they did recently on the Welsh? Almost a day. In fact, later on you'll see the very latest awful running car driven by the Swedish driver, Roy Magnusson. Now, all of them, so that's Andy Murray and his water dancing setting off, a brand new engine, 
I can tell you now that he's gone away. It's reputed to produce 260 horsepower. Clark has 240 horsepower, and in the early stages is already using it to the full. Tony Fox trying to get to grips with his new escort, but heading for several moments off the road. Russell Brooks, also destined to have trouble early on. The quickest escort is Ari Bartonens, already pulling out a few seconds lead. Chris Slater, new man in the Chrysler team with the twin cam Avenger, but no stranger to the Scottish rally. Tony Fall with travel agent Mike Broad in the Opal Cadet, travelling a good deal faster than either of them expected. Tony Pond takes his own advice and is tackling the early stages like a series of sprints. and Violet going well, but a bump steer problem is already costing him up to two seconds a mile. Will Sparrow in the Vauxhall doesn't seem to have noticed the orange light on the dashboard. Although it means low oil pressure, he's certainly not lifting off. The other flying fin, Penty Arikala, is really flying in his elderly Mark I Escort. car on the Scottish, the Esso supported escort of Tony Drummond, completed just two days before the event and with only 300 miles on the clock. Behind the leaders, in the Group 1 battle for standard cars, the arm-waving Swede Broad Daniels. Ari Bartonen, already with a good lead, slides past the stalled escort of David Thompson. A hot BDA engine is always a pig to restart. So far, we've uh, we've met some very very rough stages. Sorry, I'm... So I've been uh, just in the process of changing the rear springs and the shock absorbers to try and make it bounce less. It seems particularly bad just at the moment. So we hope this will cure it. Is this because the stages are harder than you anticipated? Then is they are much rougher than I anticipated. Yes, they don't. I've never seem to have met them quite so hard uh, packed and rough and they seem very bumpy or forever going up and up and up in the air so uh, it's putting quite a strain on them. Is there anything wrong with Tony's car? Well the, um, the straps are allowing the car to grain out. They put them on to m &S tires now which should give them a little bit more grain clearance we hope. Was that affecting his time sir? Yeah the last stage he ran five miles on a flat anyway so it's going to be a bit down on time on that one. What about the other TR7? Uh, they just changed the front struts on that. It's got the same trouble, lack of ground clearing. Oh. Why wasn't that discovered before? Um, well, lack of time getting to get the proper springs. Uh, at the end of stage two, we saw poor Russell in the Russell Brooks in the service area, and he'd obviously rolled, and the bodywork was very much uh, modified. Uh, we also saw John Taylor on, I can't remember now whether it was stage one or two, but he'd obviously gone off, and his co-driver had walked all the way down to the finish. So uh, I presume they must have been having some problems. However, we have seen them go through here now, so uh, obviously they're on the way again. has lost a good half minute by rolling and is desperately trying to regain lost time and catch up with the leaders. Pond's TR7 is already out and Brian Kulcheth sounds destined to follow. Despite severe front wheel wobble on the Datsun, Andy Dawson is up to fifth place.
no such problems for Tony Ford, who's extracting even more speed from his Opel Cadet in fourth place. How's it going, Paul? Too bad. No. Too bad. Struggling along, you know? Yes. I like your fur line development. Pretty handy. Very nice. Yes. yes. Any incidents this morning? Uh, no, none yet. No, a bit oh, early yet, isn't it? It is a bit. It's yeah. not running all right, is it? Yes, very well indeed. Have you heard of anybody uh, having any problems? Um, I think Ru Russell's been off, hasn't he? And they say that most of the Scotchmen are taking to the woods as quickly as they can. <laughs> well, we're lying second, third, uh, before the last stage, but unfortunately we hit the bank and went off the road for 50 seconds. And so we don't know where we're lying just now. We ought to still be in the first ten, but we'll just have to wait and see. Is the car still OK, though? Is it going to be drivable tomorrow? Yes, probably we don't have too much rain, because rain and plastic windscreens don't go together. to stage 12 and not all the spectators can take off their coats to enjoy the sunshine Cameron Loch Lomond Wildlife Park one and a half miles of winding tarmac road crews clean this stage without penalty, but it's really only a warm-up as the cars head northwards to the classic stages of the Highlands. Russell Brooks chases Roger Clark up Rest and Be Thankful Hill Climb, one of the trickiest and twistiest tarmac miles in British rally. Stage by stage, Brooks is clipping vital seconds off the others, and is second fastest on this test, despite missing a gear at the final hip. Next up should be Ari Barton, but he's late. At the bottom of the hill, things are looking bad for the rally leader. Meanwhile, tarmac specialist Will Sparrow tackles the climb. Never, never 
I broke one, yeah. Well, uh, we've never ruined one. Don't know yet. I think it's the pinion gone. Mick Jones, Ford's legendary service chief. So, um, see if you can find a Ford compactor with a, a Atlas disc, OK? Atlas disc. Can Fine. You? Back on the hill, Iris countryman, Penty Arikala, slides his car upwards to set fastest time. Two seconds quicker than Brooks. By now, Barton and co-driver Peter Bryant is getting worried. We don't know how serious it is at the moment. Certainly, it affected us at the end of the last stage. We had to slow down quite considerably. We got to the end of the last stage and we pushed the car. The rules say, of course, you can't have outside assistance, so we pushed the car to here. Now the boys are working away. In a few minutes, we'll find out what sort of problem it is and how serious it is. It doesn't look very good, but on the other hand, these boys can work miracles. So uh, let's cross that bridge when we get to them. Tony Drummond equals Clark's time despite being the first of many to get it all wrong at the airfield. Two minutes to get it out once they bring the bits back. Is it a question of removing what's inside out? That's right. It's not a complete accident. No, no, no. It's it's just taking it out. Who would have a spare axle? It's not going to do any harm, is it? Taking it out. Vauxhall. Vauxhall. Their van. They've got an axle in their car, so. What does it make? Crown and opinion. Oh, that's the Vauxhall. 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 Vauxhall.
Yes, we did the. Uh, he took three seconds off us on there, Roger, which he was three seconds behind us this morning when he started. We did the same time on the first stage, so now he's drawn level with us. What's this version? Well, that is a three litre. Yes, it is three litre. There's nothing no. we can do. We have a terrible problem. <laughs> a three litre Capri death. <laughs> it's ten years ago since I won it last. Oh well. <laughs> Southampton won the cup. Are you, you're prepared to do that? For spectator Ken Brown of Nottingham, the Scottish rally up to now had been much like any other. Maybe too late. No. Oh, we have to wait for the Ford competition manager Peter Ashcroft returns to supervise the transplant. You were first relay to Capri. We have tried everything, helicopter and everything. Look, we've just finished 13. Yeah, you've got We're due to start 14, right? Now 14 scheduled start time was in effect approximately 10.50, okay? One hour, uh, add one hour's lateness for a nominal yeah. latest time, yeah, right. it's 11.50. But of course, that doesn't count here. It only starts to really count when we've got the end there. We've got to go all the way around up there. I don't think they are going to still be more than an hour lateness start with us. No, it's, it's it not, should it's only be time control. It's not in the regulations. That's right. That. So we've, we've got to book into that time control there at TC5 plugging in. 12.57 plus one hour, 13.57, now you're nearly two o'clock, plus whatever delay allowance I can achieve on the way through. Right. Okay? So what does all that mean, Peter? It means that we're very, very tight for time. We can't afford to spend more than another 10, 12 minutes here. And it means that we'll have to go um, straight away and not stop again for service until we arrive at uh, TC5N. But before we get to that time control, there are... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stages. So quite some way to go yet before the tanker drop. Test when this is quiet. of a production car axle and BDA gearing produces interesting acceleration characteristics. The best thing I think to do is to get it hooked into the dealer down the road yeah. and get them to put a new, either a new axle in complete or a new Carmel and pinion and just send the bill to me, I'll give you my time.
by now, the leading cars are eight stages further on at Inverary Castle, where Clark and Brooks continue to battle for the lead. Behind them, and slowly overhauling Clark, is Penty Arikala, now in third place. This stage proves to be easily cleanable, and the crews start their southward trek towards air for the overnight halt. battered cars on the road back to air, Tony Falls is missing. Do you know what happened to Tony at all? No, uh, well, just he went off. Where? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Is he out uh, there? Yeah, he's out. Oh. Yeah. He went, went, just went off the road. The front brakes locked up. He went into a ditch. Out of control. Uh, I think we were about second or third at that time. But uh, Harry Vatten had just retired. But, you know, we were feeling quite proud of, pr proud of ourselves and uh, feeling very pleased, and you tend to uh, get a bit carried away. For the leading ladies, Jill Robinson and Pauline Gallick, it's clean-up time. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> I've got to turn the wash. <laughs> no, we're just trying to... The only trouble is it shows up all the bad bits, doesn't it? We clean it. You got any bad bits, don't you, Well, there's a few wrinkles, isn't there? What happened? <laughs> On the car, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> any incidents at all? Um, we started to go a bit quick towards the end and had one or two near ones, but apart from that, we've been all right. We had a very, very big big moment on the on a, a bit of road which was um, very dead straight but was very very what we call yumpy you know up and down and we were taking off and I swear we must be about six feet off the ground and when we landed we split all the back of the body up which we've had to weld but um, you know we've, we've welded that up now and we're all waiting for tomorrow now. Day three stage 30. A last long chase is well and truly on. Brooks has now taken the lead and Clark is clinging desperately onto third place. One minute ahead of Dawson. In second place, Penty Arikala. Despite a puncture, Eric Arby of Norway has fought his way into the top ten. Teammate Jill Robinson shows a good turn of speed, despite a flat on her near side rear. Andy Dawson still keeping in touch with the leaders. Drummond also going well despite a puncture. Uh, Roger. What's the latest news on him? Um, he's still third, but I think he's uh, sort of getting his welly into it this morning. We heard him misfiring very badly on the first stage this morning. Is that um, No, I don't think the engine was a problem. He'd had a puncture. He did the last two miles of that stage with a puncture. Uh, flat front. So he lost about 40 seconds, but I believe the stage has been scrubbed since then. Going back to Friday, what, what happened here to, to cause this? Uh... Uh, that was on the second special stage, in actual fact, and we were running an experimental front suspension system. There were only small changes, which we didn't think would be have too much effect on the handling of the car. Unfortunately, it sort of gave the car a mind of its own, and we'd already had three moments up to when we actually rolled it and when the car spun in the middle of the track. And we changed the suspension, the front suspension, that is, straight after the, that special stage. And since then, we've had no trouble. Harry's still out there after all that drama. What? what how, why was? It? Yeah. Well, the problem is with, with it not being set up and workshop. We didn't set it up properly. Yeah, in workshop conditions. We just took it out of the Capri, slammed it in the airstall, and uh, I suppose there was a lot of dirt and stuff in. Bits of teeth and bits of bearing all floating about inside, and I suppose it just chewed well, the front bearing up. Three months. Four, four stages. Four stages.
Uh, it's certainly a very tense battle because in the last four stages we've pulled out one second on Pentia Ricola. No, and one second in 40 miles motion isn't very much at all, is it? Firmly disposed of Roger Clark, Penty Arikala is now going flat out and sharing fastest stage times with Russell Brooks. As the night stages approach, he's getting closer and closer to the rally leader and driving faster than ever. We, we try as fast as we can. Uh, we have still a very good chance to, to win this event if we don't hit any troubles. Well, what are the fans like at night? Well, it's, uh, for us it's better because our rallies in Finland, they are night rallies, or rallies, so it's all right at night. the finish ramp seems very close. But the drama is still unfolding on the last few stages. Arikana has been forced to slow with a broken rear axle and drops back behind Clark and Dawson. But there'll be no dramas for Russell Brooks, who has a clear lead as the cars approach the final stage at a Cray Forest. To the last stage of the rally, Russell. Um, you're about three minutes ahead, so what are you going to do with the tactics? <laughs> very slow and very gentle. Um, yeah, I think we can say the winning post in sight if we're not quite there yet. But uh, you can always uh, stumble on the last stage, so we're going to go very, very carefully over that one. We've got some catching up to do if you're going to get on Russell. There's only one stage left, I can't see it happening. No. So Russell Brooks, co-driven by John Brown, sets out on the last four vital miles of the rally. All he has to do is keep the car on the track to win the most important event of his career. Heading for second place overall, Roger Clark and Jim Porter. The first time they've been soundly beaten on the Scottish in ten years. In third place, Andy Dawson and Andy Marriott after a consistent drive in the Datsun Violet. Fourth overall, and only 12 seconds down, Penty Arikala and Mike Greasley finish the rally with their rear axle held in place by a farmer's chain. In fifth place, after a terrific drive, Paul Faulkner and Monty Peters in their privately entered escort. Sixth place, Chris Slater and Paul White in their Avenger. Chrysler teammate Robin Air Monson finishes ninth overall to win the Group 1 category. Seventh place, 
and a tremendous debut for the Esso car, driven by Tony Drummond and Phil Short. The end of the final stage, and Russell Brooks has made it. Pressure's off, Russell, how do you feel? Absolutely great, fabulous, fabulous. It's when, my first international win, ever. When, when you rolled it on the very first day, did you ever feel you'd be in the lead at this stage, on the last stage of the rally? No, never, but it's uh, proof that you should never give up trying, isn't it? Carl's done fabulously well, you know, it's an escort to finish the Scottish and the punishment that I gave it as well, superb.